Welcome back to a jam-packed space news update. This week we've got action from OneWeb Launch 19, another positive ESA Juice update, a good note from Saxavord, and Blue Origin were selected to develop the next human landing system for NASA. All that and so much more. So stick around and let's get going. All right, uh, lift off and the clock has started. All right, everyone, we start this week with another launch of OneWeb satellites, but this time with a twist. On the 20th of May, a Falcon 9 successfully launched from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California, carrying 15 OneWeb Constellation satellites. These are additional satellites for the existing OneWeb Constellation and are needed to increase redundancy across the system. Should any satellites fail or need to be deorbited for any reason, think of them as spares in space. These are placed into a higher low Earth orbit and can be brought down as needed. It also takes the total up to 633 of a planned 648 satellites, with one more launch aiming to finalise that total. Also on this flight was an additional OneWeb payload, the JoeySat. This is a demonstration platform containing several new technologies, including a digitally regenerative payload and multi-beam phased array antennas. The main goal, however, is to test out an innovative beam hopping system, hence the name JoeySat, because, you know, kangaroos, which will allow satellites to switch between different locations on Earth, adjusting the signal strength for communications based on demands required of the system. This is a really cool development as it will allow for even greater coverage from the network and provide resiliencies for ultra-demand services. After a successful launch, Booster 1063 successfully landed on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You, completing its 11th mission overall. Next, we have another JUICE update from the European Space Agency, and as you can see, yes, we finally have some movement on the JUICE progress bar, taking its complete mission total status to 1%. Even more exciting was the news that that pesky rhyme antenna has broken free. Yes, the planned series of manoeuvres to break the ice and free the last pin holding the antenna in place actually worked, thanks to some intricate rolling and heating. A job well done, and as you can see from the video, the boom is now at its full 16 feet extension after three weeks worth of effort from the team. The handy graph on screen also shows the shock effects on the spacecraft, giving further confirmation of deployment. Once JUICE reaches Jupiter, RIME will be used to study subsurface structures of Europa, Ganymede and Callisto down to a depth of 9km, and is quite frankly one of the most important pieces of equipment on the spacecraft. In catching up with news from the previous week, we had that big announcement from VAST, who are planning to put a privately funded space station into orbit with the help of SpaceX. Yep, you heard that right. In what looks like a modern day equivalent of Skylab, VAST are planning to build a 70 meter cubed pressure vessel called Haven 1, which has capacity for a crew of four to live and work in space. It'll be deployed by a Falcon 9, and you can see that it fits pretty nicely inside a standard fairing. Then a crew dragon will rendezvous and dock with the station, delivering private astronauts or space tourists, where they can carry out some nice science experiments and generally muck around in the vacuum of space for a hefty fee. Interestingly, the Crew Dragon will also provide some of the life support for the station, so for the moment at least, the station doesn't look to be entirely self-sufficient. However, all that can and probably will change, as the Haven is designed to be modular. VAST's longer term goal is to build a 100 meter long, multi-module spinning artificial gravity space station. First, VAST though are planning to launch Haven 1 in 2025, then by 2028 they plan to have a larger module, and into the 2030s they will look to start construction of their mammoth station, just as the ISS begins decommissioning. Regardless of how you feel about privately funded astronauts and whatnot, this opens up a greater number of possibilities for humans to live and work in space. Next, this past week saw NASA announce their choice for the next company to build their secondary human landing system. As we know, the main HLS for Artemis is said to be SpaceX's Starship, 
but after the controversy surrounding that choice, NASA decided it would probably be best to have a second option on the table. And wouldn't you know it, they've chosen Blue Origin to deliver just that. Blue Origin are joined by long-term NASA partner agencies Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman, amongst a whole bunch of others, and plan to have their Blue Moon Lander ready in time for Artemis V in 2029. The Blue Moon Lander is planned to be 16 feet tall and designed to fit inside a standard 7 meter fairing on Blue Origin's New Glenn rocket. Of course, we're still waiting for New Glenn to actually be ready, but with the awarding of the HLS contract and the $3.4 billion that goes with it, this will give Blue Origin a mighty boost indeed. Now, in something a little bit unexpected from this past week, Melissa Quinn, the head of Spaceport Cornwall, announced that she will be leaving that role to pursue another venture within the spaceflight industry. After nine years of work and through the first flight from Cornwall by Virgin Orbit back in January of this year, the UK space industry as a whole has a lot to thank Melissa for. She was instrumental in not just getting SBC up and running, but also for tirelessly promoting the UK space industry all across the world. We wish her well in whatever it is she's choosing to do next, but the question remains as to who will be stepping in to some pretty big shoes that she'll be leaving behind. Of course, Spaceport Cornwall has set itself up nicely for the future, with the completion of the Space Systems Integration Facility on the site. This means that it's the only place in Western Europe where companies can currently build, integrate and launch satellites from. That said, without an actual launch provider, their work is cut out to try and secure that part for UK sovereign launches. Speaking of that, uh, Virgin Orbit recently announced an extension to the deadline for their bidding process and they currently remain up for sale. 30 unnamed investors have expressed interest in buying the alien company, with a skeleton crew still working on Rocket 8, in the hopes that they'll be able to make that launch and fulfil client commitments in the coming months. The UK government this week confirmed that they have no interest in buying Virgin Orbit, much like what they did with OneWeb, so the looming threat of bankruptcy remains a very real threat for them, unless of course they can force through a bidder by the end of May. Up at Saxevoort, uh, this past few weeks saw representatives from the launch site speaking with members of the British government. This was to discuss their spaceport licence. Work has continued rapidly and the ground station network up at the site is now fully operational. Saxevoort are pushing for their licence to be granted within the next three months in order for launches to begin in earnest. It's hard not to agree with that assessment, and if you follow this channel, then you know that both High Impulse and Rocket Factory Augsburg are waiting in the wings, ready to complete their first launches from the spaceport. Not only that, but apparently the Japanese space agency JAXA are keen to launch from Shetland too, so it will be vitally important that they get their license over the line in good time. How amazing would that be? Could we see a future Hakuru-R lunar lander mission launched from Scotland? Who knows? Watch this space. And from this past week, Sunday the 21st of May, saw the launch of Axiom's next crewed mission. Axiom Crew 2 launched to the International Space Station on board a Falcon 9, which was the second mission for Axiom, carrying a crew of four private astronauts to the orbiting science platform, including the first female Saudi astronaut, Rihanna Bernawi, and commanded by former NASTRA astronaut, Peggy Whitson, who holds the record for the American with the longest time spent in space at 665 days pre-launch. The other crew members are John Schofner, a passionate skydiver, and mission specialist, also from Saudi Arabia, is Ali Arghani, a former Royal Saudi Air Force pilot. The crew of astronauts docked at the International Space Station on Monday the 22nd of May, and they plan to stay on board for 8 days, which will see them carry out about 20 different scientific experiments and broadcast to children all across the world before returning safely before the end of the month. Two cool things of note on this launch included Booster 1088 marking its first successful flight, and then followed that up by returning to the landing zone LZ-1 at Cape Canaveral. This was the first time that SpaceX have landed a booster back to a surface landing pad, rather than a drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean, following a crew launch. 
but it is expected to become more of a regular occurrence for crewed flights in the future. Not a surprise given what SpaceX has planned for crewed Starship flights. Finally, in my last outing, I said that I was working on some amazing things in the background for this channel, and I'm pleased to announce one of those things today. Yes, I am super happy to say that I have joined forces with the lovely folks over at the Team Space Media Group. That group includes a great bunch of creators and channels, from Total Space to Astrolysis Lab, Angry Astronaut, Space Nessie, To The Future, and a whole bunch more. You can find and follow along with all of the channels over on Twitter at WeRTSMG, where you'll find links to each and every channel, which cover everything from space to STEM and beyond. So go and check them all out and give them all a little like and follow while you're at it as well. There you have it, another jam-packed week of space updates. I did say that 2023 was set to be the best yet and we are only just getting started here. If you did like this video, give it a little like and consider sharing as well. And if you're not already done so, why not subscribe so that you don't miss out on future space news updates. I appreciate your support each and every single time and it goes a long, long way to helping this channel grow. I've been Tom June, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.